In this video, we're going to talk about Parkinson's disease and dementia. The links between dementia and Parkinson's are quite strong and established. And in clinical practice, what you'll see is those patients who are on level three, four or five of the journey into Parkinson's will start to develop features of dementia. One of the unfortunate facts is that around 60 to 80% of patients with Parkinson's disease will actually develop dementia. Typically, this is within 14 years of diagnosis of Parkinson's, but sometimes this, can be, this progression can be quicker. When considering patients with dementia and Parkinson's, we generally divide up their clinical signs into mild, moderate and severe. For mild, features of cortical dementias are present, and in a moment we'll go through the differences between cortical and subcortical dementias. The next is moderate, where some features of cortical dementia are present. And finally, a patient is deemed severe if Sim symptoms that they experience are consistent with a patient with Alzheimer's disease. In order to understand the difference between cortical and subcortical dementias, we need to first understand what that means in terms of the brain. And what you can see here is an MRI of a patient's brain. Cortical refers to the outside of the brain, and that's the grey matter that you can see around these areas. So cortical is the outside. The subcortical is the white matter, and that's anything on the MRI that shows as white, all these areas here. And you can see that Parkinson's, as we discovered in the previous videos, affects the substantia niagara and the striatum, which are all considered white areas of the brain and therefore subcortical areas. So when we divide up dementias into cortical and subcortical, it gets a little bit easier to understand them. In this table, you can see on the left side, there's the features that the patient will experience, the symptoms, and then there's the cortical, the gray matter, or the subcortical, the white matter. Remember the gray matter on the MRI was on the outside, the subcortical, the white matter was deeper. And here you can see that Parkinson's is considered a subcortical dementia because it affects the deep inner workings of the brain. What Parkinson's patients generally get is they get a dementia then that affects the cortical matter. And if we just have a look at the symptoms of Parkinson's very quickly, we can see that many patients that we see with Parkinson's, at the very early stages, they won't actually have any memory problems and their cognition in stages one and two is generally intact so their memory symptoms are less marked. However, they do experience some quite bad motor symptoms in the terms of rigidity, tremor, and balance problems. And they sometimes have language problems as well. But again, their calculation in comparison to patients with dementia are less impaired because their memory and their cognition is generally intact in those early stages. However, they do have those posture problems, and as we discovered, they have that forward-facing, bowed, shuffling gait. When Parkinson's patients then start to develop a cortical dementia that affects the grey matter, it's generally either a vascular dementia caused by hypertension or atherosclerosis. It can be a Lou body dementia, which is a buildup of proteins, or it can be Alzheimer's disease, which is just degeneration of the neurons. And here we start to see patients with Parkinson's and a cortical dementia. They start to get those memory problems and they start, but they've already got those motor symptoms as well. And this is the point when they start to trouble to communicate. They may get aspasia, so difficulty comprehending language, and they may get dysarthria if they haven't got it already. And that's problem with articulation of language as well their calculation becomes impaired, and that's when you start to get these patients that have a quite marked memory symptoms. They may score very low on the AMT test, but they also have a Parkinson's as well. 